Hey horror fans, welcome back to Room 237, coming at you with another Universal Monster review. And this time, I decided to look at the uh, Wolfman set. And weirdly enough, um, I've actually reviewed all the films from the actual Wolfman series. Because uh, the, the Wolfman, as we know, the Wolfman never really got his own series. He just had his original film, The Wolfman, in 1941. And then all his sequels was, you know, Frankenstein meets the Wolfman, House of Frankenstein, House of Dracula, Abbott Costello meet Frankenstein. He never really had his own solo series and solo sequels. So I've already reviewed all those. But this, this uh, legacy collection or the Universal box set did include one previous film and then one that was made in the 40s and the first one which was actually the first real hollywood attempt at a werewolf film was in 1936 and that is werewolf of london which stars uh henry hull as the uh, titular character and Warner Oland as his rival. Came out in 1936, as I, uh, well, the back of this says 35. So 1935, fuck me, I was wrong. Directed by Stuart Walker, and it actually had, the makeup effects was actually done by Jack Pierce. Now this was six years before the original Wolfman. And the look of this werewolf was, it was actually a more simplistic approach than what would be used on Lon Chaney. It's more just like, instead of hair all over the face, it's just like a harsh, a widow's peak with like, like a taller, similar to that, but like slick back. And, you know, like a brow, cheekbones, the nose, and the fangs with, you know, like a beard. So similar, but much more simplistic to this. Some people either loved it or hated it. I, I didn't mind it. Uh, I thought it was a decent look for, like, a first werewolf film. Of course, that one's still my favorite. Um, the title itself, Werewolf of London... Even though it might not have been as big a household name as the Wolfman, it did spawn on some sort of related stuff, I guess. I don't really know what you would call it. Uh, I guess references like the song uh, Werewolf of London by Warren Zevon, John Landis' 1981 horror comedy An American Werewolf in London, which is a fantastic film. One of my favorite werewolf films. Probably my favorite werewolf film after the original Wolfman. It does have my favorite transformation scene. And then the piece of shit sequel that that one got, which was American Werewolf in Paris. So, Werewolf of London does have a legacy. But it's not canon with anything Wolfman or Larry Talbot related. It was just... Um... Hollywood's first attempt at a werewolf film. And the story of this one, it it follows, it also stars Valerie Hobson, Lester Matthews, Lawrence Grant, Clark Williams, and S Spring Byington. It's a very short movie. It's only 75 minutes, which many films back then was kind of like that. But uh, it, it actually, uh, Henry Hall plays Wilfred Glendon, who is a, an English botanist. And it opens up in a, a, a Tibet. He's looking for this certain kind of plant, a certain kind of flower. And, you know, while he's there looking for it, he's attacked by this creature that, you know, happens to be a werewolf but when he's attacked it 
kind of like we kind of we catch a glimpse of the face but the the actual attack itself happens like at, from a distance we got branches in the way it looks like a guy in like a leather jacket it looks like they're just fighting i i I tried freeze framing it and going slow it, it was kind of hard to see it, it doesn't look like he's being attacked by a werewolf and he's not bitten he's scratched and he he's able to find his um the plant he's looking for he brings it back to london and once he's back in London, he, there's this other botanist, uh, Dr. Yogami, played by Warner Oland, who, kind of the rival throughout the film, he tells him, uh, well, he, he says we met while in Tibet, and th they were both seeking this plant, which was called uh, Marafaza, Marafaza. I couldn't remember what they called it in that. <gasps> but Yogami tells him that the bite or scratch of a werewolf, of course, that you'll become one. But this plant is a temporary uh, antidote. And so we see it kind of happens because he uses these moonlights to grow more of these plants. He kind of puts it near them. Like, he sees fur growing on his arms, so he puts it near it, and it goes away. We see that he's estranged from his wife and some other people. And, you know, as the film goes on, we see that uh, this, Don, this Yogami guy um, steals his plants. So he's kind of out of luck, and he he turns into a werewolf. Whereas the transformation scene, it's not like Wolfman where we get like the uh, uh, dissolved cuts of gradual applications. He's walking by, and each like pillar or whatever it is that he walks by, you know, when when he's no longer in view, and then he comes back into view. Each one, he has more and more of this makeup. Kills a young girl. And from then on, you know, he's he's waiting for the plants to bloom again. And he tries to, you know, stop himself from being free. Like, he tries to, he gets a room at an inn, but he tries to lock himself in, in like a cellar. It, it doesn't really work. He's, he always manages to break free and kill again. And, and that's basically the film. I mean, towards the end, we find out... Well, I guess now going into spoilers, it's not as good as Wolfman. I would say Wolfman is, the, is when Universal got it right. But Werewolf of London, it, it was a good first attempt. And it is a decent werewolf film. It is way better than a lot of other werewolf movies I've seen. It's even better than American Werewolf in Paris. It's better than Wolfman 2010. Better than Twilight. <laughs> Any one of those movies, like the CGI werewolves and shit. It's still decent. It's still a good universal horror film. But, you know, this is spoilers. I would still recommend Werewolf of London. You know, just because it's not as good as the original Lon Chaney, Larry Talbot, Wolfman. It's still pretty good. We find out that Yogami was the werewolf that attacked him in uh, 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 Tibet in the beginning of the film. But... Um, he turns into one, he kills Yogami, and he decides to go after his wife, who we see, even though he loves her, he doesn't really show her very much attention. He just wants to focus on his plants and for her to do whatever. 
I think it's kind of hinted that, you know, she, she's been kind of reconnecting with this other guy who was like a childhood friend, childhood crush. But, which, you know, the werewolf does, he does attack that guy as a werewolf, but he doesn't kill him. And just as the, as, um, Glendon is about to kill his wife, Lisa, that's when the cops come in, uh, Colonel Forsyth, played by Lawrence Grant, shoots him. And I actually liked this ending, because then the werewolf actually has a voice, and he's like, you know, thank you for a bullet. It was, it's the only way that this could have gone well in a moment you're gonna see you know who I am I tried to do everything he's like Lisa I'm sorry I love you then he turns back into Glendon because he's like a renowned botanist like he's he's high up in a society they decide to not let him go down as the vicious creature the the vicious monster, the werewolf that's been killing people around London. He even says, you know, there was an attack. He got in the way trying to protect his wife, and I accidentally shot him. So, I mean, and, and the cop, the, the colonel is even willing to take the blame, like, hey, I fucked up. I shot him by accident while he was trying to protect his wife from this home invasion. So I thought that was kind of different. I thought that was kind of a nice, uh, kind of a bittersweet ending. Or seeing how most werewolf movies end, it was kind of a sweet ending. So I, I definitely give it props on the ending. A much happier ending, especially for a werewolf movie. Um, this one kind of... There, because, of course, after this, then you had the Wolfman, then you had just the ensemble films that felt like Wolfman sequels. But, you know, I don't think Lon Chaney ever really got his fair sequel. But uh, Jack Pierce's style of, like, the a minimalist approach to this werewolf, like this style... Um, there's a 1994 film, Wolf, with Jack Nicholson as a werewolf. That look was kind of inspired by this one. I guess the show Penny Dreadful kind of takes notes from this style of makeup. Um, the film was re-released in 1951. It, it's been novelized twice by authors with uh, uh, pseudonyms. Uh, what I was looking for was because there was a there's another film from 1946, so right, right, sort of at the end of the Universal Monsters, before Abbott Costello came in and revived it with comedies, which is She Wolf of London, which which will be my next review. I don't really think that has anything to do with Werewolf of London or the characters from what I could tell it's not really a sequel but you know as uh, I still think this was a solid attempt at a werewolf film before Wolfman and I, I actually enjoyed it and it's it's forgivably short 75 minutes uh it's definitely original, even even being the first one. Seeing as as many werewolf films as I've seen already, I mean the fact that there is a plant that could stop it, and the fact that someone stole his plants or they they bloom too slowly, being the reason why he's screwed and ends up turning. You know, it it has some ideas that weren't really replicated as much. And are pretty original to this story. So, if you're into werewolf films or just you know the the folklore, the idea of werewolves, 
definitely seek this movie out. But that is Werewolf of London, and thank you for watching.